السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To carry on with the head and neck lectures, I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the anatomy of the trichopalatine fossa and its contents. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor of anatomy at Mansoura University, Egypt. Next, I'm gonna talk about the vascular content of the infratemporal and trichopalatine fossa. We start with the maxillary vessels. We need to describe their origin, course, and termination, and enumerate the branches of the maxillary artery and their distribution. Also, we need to describe the site, connection, and the termination of the trigoid plexus of veins. Let's start first to the maxillary artery. It is one of the two terminal branches of the external carotid artery. It arises while the external carotid artery lies within the parotid gland. It passes forward between the mandible and the sphenomandibular ligament into the infratemporal fossa. And then it enters the trichopalatine fossa through the trichomaxillary fissure. Along the course of the maxillary artery, it is divided by the lateral trigoid muscle into three parts. First part, second part, and third part. It has almost 15 branches, five from each part, and one terminal branch. From the first part of the maxillary artery, we have the middle meningeal artery, which passes to the meninges through the foramen spinosum. We have the inferior alveolar artery, which get into the mandibular canal through the mandibular foramen. We have another meningeal branch called accessory meningeal artery, get into the middle cranial fossa through foramen ovale. And we have two small arteries, one to the external acoustic meatus, we call it the deep auricular artery, and another one to supply the anterior surface uh, of the, or the lateral surface of the eardrum, we call it the anterior tympanic artery. It get to it through the petro tympanic fissure. The second part of the maxillary artery gives branches to the soft tissue there in the infratemporal fossa. So we have deep temporal arteries, we have masetric branches, we have lateral trigoid branches, medial trigoid branches, and buccal branch. The third part of the maxillary artery gives branches which accompany the branches of the maxillary nerve and the trichopalatine ganglion, so basically they carry the same name. So we have the posterior superior alveolar artery, the descending palatine artery which splits into greater palatine and lesser palatine arteries. Greater palatine artery supply the hard palate and its mucous membrane and the gums, while the lesser palatine supplies the soft palate. We have the pharyngeal artery, which supplies the nasopharynx. We have the sphenopalatine artery to the nasal cavity. And we have the artery of the trigoid canal. The terminal branch of the third part of the maxillary artery is called the infraorbital artery. It passes forward along with the infraorbital nerve, leaves the trichopalatine fossa through the infraorbital fissure, lie in the infraorbital groove, infraorbital canal, and then emerges through the infraorbital foramen and appears in the face. It supplies the structure of the orbit plus the upper incisors and canine teeth and the infraorbital artery distributed to the many structures in the face like the lateral part of the nose, like the upper lip, like the lower eyelid. For the trigoid plexus of veins, it is made of a, a network of veins over the trigoid muscles. It drains the regions supplied by the branches of the maxillary artery and it is uh, connected with the inferior ophthalmic veins which lie inside the orbit and also connected with the cavernous sinus by emissary veins or small veins. Also it is connected with the facial vein by deep facial veins. 
So infection can be transmitted from the face to the cavernous sinus through these connections. Finally, it drains into a very short maxillary vein, which unite with the superficial temporal vein and together they form the retromandibular vein. The retromandibular vein here then split into anterior division and posterior division. The anterior division with the facial vein drain into the common facial vein, while the posterior division with the posterior auricular vein they form the external jugular vein. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please not forget to subscribe, like, and share, and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video. Thanks for listening.